The Dunning-Kruger effect, it expresses a simple notion, the idea that one will believe their own understanding of a topic to be more expertly proficient than it really is, at least until they realize how woefully insufficient their grasp really was. At the same time, Aldous Huxley's 1932 novel Brave New World describes a society unbound from the plight of consistent stressors, a utopia in which the concept of leisure becomes the core focus of society, and the social dynamics and struggles are seemingly vapid, yet accepted as reasonable concerns for what other conflicts are there to overcome. Most importantly, however, in Season 6, Episode 19 of the 37 Primetime Emmy Award-winning series Frasier, our dear Dr. Crane is met with some distressing news. His brother has scored higher on an IQ test than he himself, and Frasier retorts with the following. If ever I feel envy about your IQ again, I'll just conjure up the image of you sprawled out on a bed of live koi. <laughs> weeping and desperately trying to revive that little plastic diver. These three pillars of man's endeavors are but pieces to a puzzle, the defining works that allow us to answer a great question. Council or PC, which is better for me? Surely, a pointless argument, not in the sense that one is inherently better, that the answer is clear somehow, but more so from the standpoint of who f cares. It would fit nicely into the dystopian future of the world state since there's seemingly nothing else to argue about. It's fueled by the Dunning-Kruger effect with misinformation running wild, and legitimate discussion on the matter is futile, as much like Dr. Crane we seem to fall into narcissistic defense mechanisms to justify some superiority complex, and I will not be contributing to it. This is not meant as an opinion piece, nor a deep dive into the fanboy psyche. We've done that enough these past few months. Instead, what I do care about is information, and how it can allow for a possibly different perspective into this grand debate. Objectivity is truth, based in hard facts, real measurable notions that can't be argued about. Dogs are animals. Halloween is in October. Arnold has a football head. In the PC debate, uh, these things could be considered objective facts. And as you see, you have to designate nearly all these points with the qualifier can. Yeah, this doesn't help a lot. Subjectivity is opinions, things we can argue about. Is Space Hog a one-hit wonder? Are clowns sexy? What constitutes as degeneracy? And here is where it gets a little tricky. Even objective truths are only as valuable to a debate as we subjectively decide they are. For example, in an argument such as, is monster healthy, you could go about listing all the nutritional facts, explaining in detail why each ingredient is considered semantically unhealthy, but the opposition's counterargument could still be along the lines of, well, it contains 200% of vitamin B6, and in my opinion, that positive attribute outweighs all the negative details you previously provided. My point being that if any argument can have an element of subjectivity, no objectivity can be decided. And in the attempt to win an argument, it's commonplace to see these debates divulge into nothing more than a spectacular event of mental gymnastics. Surely it's not worth engaging in, since the end goal for most internet discourse is not seeking common ground, it's purely egotistical intent to justify preconceived notions, or that aforementioned superiority complex. And even if checkmated in this proverbial chess match, you can simply say, well, I don't care about that. And yes, I know this can apply to most arguments. A better discussion would be counsel or PC, which is better for most people. And while this would be fun to delve into, lay out spreadsheets of frame rates on different builds, matching council settings, comparing average income per household, and find out how much people allocate for leisure spending. This could be done, but... See, we all overlook one important detail in these discussions. Video games. The hardware is simply a tool, a method to access the game. And see what inspired this video wasn't explaining the difference between facts and opinions, it was that I think we're looking at the argument completely wrong. Now, the whole of PC gaming is cited as having 1.3 billion gamers on board. That's a lot, but it's not really representative of what people would call the true PC gaming market here in the West. It's like saying that everyone who has used a light bulb before is a light bulb enthusiast. So the reality is that a very vast majority of the 1.5 billion number is not playing games on Steam, or may not have even purchased a game before. See, the most popular PC games of all time aren't Diablo or The Sims, Overwatch, CSGO, or even PUBG. It's this. 
Crossfire in Dungeon Fighter Online, Chinese and South Korean juggernauts, free to play, and 600 million people play it. So, if we're actually talking about buying a game, we got PUBG, Minecraft, and Diablo 3, all with pretty big numbers. Once you start looking at other sales, pretty average for a big console release, which makes me start to question just how big is the PC gaming market. See, almost all of those best-selling PC games of all time were exclusive to the PC. They were genres that just don't work well on a gamepad. When you do have that crossover, those big games that are available on both console and PC, it's just the reality that the console versions will almost always vastly outsell the PC counterpart. And this might explain why some big titles just don't get ported to PC. If a AAA publisher doesn't think they'll make much money on the platform, why go about it? Why isn't Red Dead on PC yet? Well, one reason might be the PC port of GTA 5 sold 5% of the console sales. Now that's based on some 2017 information, so it might have changed a bit since then, but it's pretty clear where Rockstar games sell the best. And even a game that seemed targeted at the PC audience, The Witcher 3, sold more on console. The conclusion I've come to is that most people that play on console or PC are drawn to specific genres that proliferate better on those platforms. They develop an attachment to the software. They wouldn't leave their platform of choice because, most likely, not all the games they want to play would be found on that other platform. This means we're dealing with two sides yelling at a brick wall. For games that do get ported to both PC and console, I can see some reason for discussion. But considering that most people that are playing PC are playing PC exclusives, it doesn't feel like a very productive debate. The lines have already been drawn, the sides picked. It's just a self-sustaining, self-indulgent cycle where nobody will win because there's nothing to win. Well, uh, what do I win? Nothing. I don't want to be the fence writing enlightened centrist, because that's not my genuine opinion. So here they are, just for you, the viewer. So I suppose this video's message applies throughout many debates and discussions. The motives of why somebody argues about something is sometimes more insightful than what's actually being argued about itself. Statements aren't made in a vacuum, there has to be a reason to why it was made. To indulge the self. Well, I really didn't talk about video games much in this one, did I? Next time. Maybe next time. This is Tyler of Knowledge Hub.